they gave you X so you can find Y, right? Well, let's see. So what they told me was that at this point, X equals one, I have this tangent line. So, so at X equals one, <clears throat> At x equals 1, oops, uh, we have this tangent line, uh, uh, y equals 2x minus 4. So let me just think about this a second. So, you know, I'm, I'm looking for this function y. Here it is. You know, Brett almost have it here. But I'm looking for a function y uh, at <clears throat> a function y. But at this point, x equals 1, <clears throat> I, have this, I have this tangent line. So what I'm looking for is initial conditions that help me find C1 and C2. So I'm kind of looking for an initial condition that says something about Y prime. Well, I, you know, I should know what Y prime is. Y prime is the derivative of the function. It is the slope of the tangent line. If that phrase pops into my brain, then I realize that the slope of the tangent line is two. So I kind of realized that I, I got, I got this initial condition that says at x equals one, and I wrote these notes kind of on, on some of your papers, that at x equals one, y prime is two. Because that's the slope of the tangent line. It's right there, you know, the slope of the tangent line. So that is kind of an initial condition that would, could be used right here to find C1. <clears throat> and I'll, I can do that real quick. But then I'm, I'm going to need another initial condition to help me find C2. I, I guess I'm going to need something to, about Y. And I, this is where I, sometimes I was a little confused on this problem. But it turns out, if X equals 1, I can find a Y value. <clears throat> when X equals 1, the Y value of the tangent line, <clears throat> when X equals 1, the Y value of the tangent line is negative 2. But, but that's not the y value of the function. Oh, wait a minute. If you're a tangent line, you touch the function at that point. So the y value of the tangent line is the y value of the function. Uh, my picture is not right because it's a negative two. But <clears throat> are you with me? The y value of the tangent line is the y value of the function because that's what it means to be a tangent at that point. They do share that y value. So it wasn't too deeply disguised, but there are two initial conditions here. This one, that when x equals 1, y prime is 2, and when x equals 1, y is uh, negative 2. And those two initial conditions, sort of disguised in that language there, uh, will help you find c1 and c2 and make this problem's over. Uh, but it was, I thought it was a good problem. Uh, <clears throat> You guys understand any questions about it you see what I'm saying you understand what I'm saying yeah man <laughs> good good morning <laughs> uh, you want me to finish it whatever when x is 1 y prime is 2 uh, that's pretty easy when x is a 1 I can plug it in there I get 4 minus 3 uh, that's a 1 plus C1. Subtract that 1. I quickly learned that C1 is a 1. So C1 is a 1. Uh, uh, then this condition tells me uh, <clears throat> when X is 1, Y is negative 2. So I can plug that in and try to find C2. Uh, just, I gotta get a common denominator. You can maybe use my calculator or whatever, but I get C2 is negative 17, six. Was that the answer? Yeah. Yeah. I, didn't, I probably didn't tell you guys the answer, but <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, so if I fill this in negative 17, six, then there we go, we found the function. What else? Any other questions off this quiz? Uh, any 
questions anywhere else uh, in the book, Bernoulli stuff or any of that? Should we just practice another Bernoulli? Because I think it was number 19. In the Bernoulli stuff? Yeah. All right, well, let's look at it. So uh, in 2.5, let's just take a look at this 19. What a, um, so we got a test tomorrow, and uh, we'll get here at 8 o'clock. You know, if you got a last-minute question, you know, I've been sort of saying that we got this two-hour time slot for our test, and we may or may not need that full two hours. Anyway, if you walk in here at 8 o'clock and you have any last-minute questions, maybe we got 10 minutes for questions or 15 minutes for questions. And you don't, I don't usually do that on a test day, but in the summer, I feel like I got a little time. Uh, you guys usually don't have last minute questions. You're ready to get to work on a test, but whatever. Um, so we'll do that tomorrow morning. Uh, at this 2-5, number 19, is a, is a Bernoulli problem. Uh, it looks like this. T squared dy dt. Uh, that's what mine looks like anyway. Um, t squared dy dt plus y squared equals ty. Well, I want to say this. I want to say that in my Bernoulli question on tomorrow's test, I will kind of highlight it and sort of say, uh, recall that a Bernoulli form, a Bernoulli in standard form looks like this, dy dx plus uh, something y uh, equals <clears throat> uh, something times y to the n. And that in order to solve a Bernoulli situation, you use this substitution, u equals y to the 1 minus n. So, so I'll kind of end my question, sort of remind you of these two ideas, which is helpful uh, and nice of me. But, um, <clears throat> but that's all kind of the two ideas I need to get going. So, uh, so all right, <clears throat> then I'm going to sort of try to get this guy in standard form. Uh, huh. Yeah, so they got these, they kind of got this, these two guys swapped for some reason here. And then I need to divide by t squared. I got a little work to do here. Let's do, uh, let's just move these first. If I move this ty over here and then move the y squared to the other side, that looks more like Bernoulli form. But then I do need to divide by this t squared, I guess. So now it'll look. more like Bernoulli form here. I just divided by t squared. I got everything in, in just switched, switched a couple things around. So there I am. I think I'm in this Bernoulli form where I should do this proper u substitution. When I do this u sub, this substitution, I'm changing the y variable into u's. So the, 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 the independent variable t is going to stay t. But, all, but the, the dependent variable y is going to get turned into u somehow. Well, here's how. Uh, I'm going to let u equal y to the 1 minus 2. The 2 comes from this, this y to the squared here, uh, y to the n here. All right, well, that means uh, that's u equals y to the negative 1. Okay, that's the substitution we're making. <clears throat> And that's the substitution for u that we're going to make. Now, I also need du dt, or du dx, depending on what letter they're using. But, but I need du dt and dy dt. I need that relationship. So in this substitution that I make, I, right now I, I take the derivative with respect to t. So on this side, it's du dt. <clears throat> on this side, I take the derivative with respect to t, and it's negative 1, y to the negative 2, times the derivative of y with respect to t, which is dy dt. And then there's a few different ways of, of kind of, what we do now is we sort of put this stuff over, we, we, we do the substitution, we, we change all this stuff, but, but, but my method is this. I know I want this initial term to be a du dt. And I can make it a du dt if I had, what I kind of want is I want that initial term to look like this. If it looks like this, I can just replace it with a du dt. I can make it look like this, this if I multiply by <clears throat> negative 1y to the negative 2. 
So that's what I do. I multiply the whole equation by negative one y to the negative two. I'll just sort of say that. Well, I'll just do it. Negative one y to the negative two times this. Uh, <laughs> negative one y to the negative two times this. I did that. <laughs> and negative one y to the negative two times this. So I just wrote it in there. I'll do my algebra now, I guess. Sometimes I'm tempted to do my algebra all in one big move there. But I'm going to do my algebra and some of my substitution now. Like I said, by multiplying by that thing, we force this first term to be du dt. This is du dt. And this usually works out nice. It, it, when you do a little algebra and then look over there at your substitution, it's usually pretty nice. Uh, the fact is, the y to the negative 2 and the y to the first multiply to be a y to the negative 1. What is y to the negative 1? U. U. So that those y guys turn into u. Now what's in front of that? <clears throat> a positive 1 over t, I guess. A positive 1 over t. And over here, I think all the y guys get eliminated. Uh, you have a y to the negative 2, you have a y to the positive 2. Those will just cancel each other out when you multiply them. You'll get y to the 0, and it'll be just a 1. In fact, it'll be a positive 1 over t squared. So after multiplying through and doing your substitution, doing a little algebra, doing a little substitution, there you go. You got yourself a nice linear first order DE, and it's in use. There's no y's anywhere. That's kind of how the method works. Any questions? Now we've got to solve this DE. <laughs> but we, we worked our way through the Bernoulli substitution process. <clears throat> but now we got a nice little DE to solve here. <clears throat> um, you guys okay? You can interrupt me if you've got questions. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, do this with the integrating factor method now. The integrating factor is e to the integral of 1 over t. So that's e to the ln t, which is just a t. My integrating factor is just a t. I multiply through by it. After I multiply through by it, I realize that the left-hand side is the derivative of the product of the integrating factor t times u. Multiply through by it and realize that the left-hand side is this product rule. Equals, I did multiply through by it, so if I multiply through by it, the other side is now a 1 over t. So that's me. That's us doing the integrating factor method, right? Multiplying through by it, the left-hand side sort of automatically takes on this role. Um, uh, and then the right-hand side, we multiply by that t. All right, I think I integrate both sides now. Integrating this is t times u. Uh, integrating this is the ln of t plus c. <clears throat> I think maybe I divide by t, and u is uh, the ln of t over t plus a c over t. That's one way to do it. You know, we're, we're finished. We solved the DE, except... We should get back to y's. This is actually u. If I want to get back to y's, u is actually a y to the negative 1, or a 1 over y. You could, you could call that 1 over y. So, uh, so that's what this u is. It's a 1 over y, and it equals, you know, I'm gonna, now I'm going to write this differently. I'm going to write this as the ln of t plus c all over t, because it is. It does have a common denominator there. I could have. I did that because now what do I want to do? One more little step. Yeah, I want to get y by itself, and the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to reciprocate that side, and I'm going to reciprocate that side. So y equals a t over an ln of t plus c. It's okay. We end up with this plus c kind of in the denominator. That's just the way these, this plus c works out. Uh, you know, sometimes you have a plus C in your numerator. Sometimes you have a plus C out on the end. Sometimes you've seen us, we end up with a multiplied C. 
Somehow our plus C turned into a multiplied C. You've seen that with our E, e work and so forth. So anyway, there it is. That ain't bad. That's the solution to this original DE. Where was he? That was this DE. Uh, it was a Bernoulli DE and we solved it. That was fun. I like that. <laughs> Yeah, there's, there's only seven or eight of them for you to practice in there, uh, <clears throat> but, but they're good. <clears throat> Any questions or concerns? Or? Okay. Um, Well, like I said, there, there is one more topic I want to sort of teach you. Um, <clears throat> yeah, it's this in 2.6. Let's let's try to get through that. It's it, it, it amounts to one question on tomorrow's test, you know, but I don't know. Uh, I mean, these questions are probably, you know, let me just talk about the test just a second. It's, a, it's an 80 point test. I'll tell you one thing about the test. The very first page of the test, well, anyway, the first page of the test probably has that question one and two like that. So on your quiz, what, what, what one and two from your quiz will be on your test. Now, wait a minute. It'll be a different DE and it'll be a, a different slope field. But, but you, maybe, again, did you notice how number one related to number two and number two related to number one? Anyway, that, that's how it'll be tomorrow, too. I'll, I'll, I'll have a different question, but different DE. But, but, uh, but anyway, that your first page will look like that. Uh, then we got to, you know, I don't know if I'll make you verify something, but, uh, but then we're solving some DEs. Uh, again, one good Bernoulli question. Hey, one good piecewise question. Uh, one good... Oh, 2.6 question, which I haven't got to yet. Uh, I don't know. A anyway, I'm trying to think. I'm thinking out loud that you, you know, you might have, um, I don't know, you might have 10 questions. Right? And then if there's 10 questions and it's 80 points, I don't know, maybe they're, maybe they're eight points each, you know? And so, last question. Um, yeah, do you think we could use uh, like a cheat sheet of the uh, of your our integrating tables? You know, I've never done that in my 23 years okay. of teaching. I want you to know the integral of sine, the derivative of sine, the integral of e. I, I want you to know that stuff. Uh, I only asked because the other day I mean, I'm pretty good at it, but I had to look up the integrating factor. I mean, the integral of a uh, tangent. Yeah, I mean, I learned. I know it now. You know, negative yeah. ln yeah. of cosine. And that's a, that's a Right, that, I got you. I mean, that's a kind of out there on the obscure side of what do we know and what do we not know. Uh, but but I, okay. I never have really let you have anything, right? I'm all right, yeah. And then usually though, <laughs> I don't really get too obscure on you. I don't, <laughs> so, but, but that's all kind of relative. What's obscure to one person might be not obscure to somebody else, but but I uh, well, I, I usually I'm, I'm not going into the cosecants and cotangents; so they don't show up much. Mm -hmm. The secants and the tangents can, the sines and the cosines do, uh, mm -hmm. but yeah. Uh, you know, the other kind of obscure stuff is you know arc secant and arc sine and arc tangent. You know, I arc tangent's kind of a, more famous than the other and arc sine. Uh, Secant, I'd stay away more away from. But, okay. But <laughs> so tangents can be cumulative. Cumulative. I can't think of that word. I know, but what do you mean by that? By x squared plus one and or one plus x squared. Well, that's true. Right. So I mean, that's why we know it so easy. Yeah. 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 <clears throat> anyway, what I was, I was about to say, we're we're, we're learning this two point six, and hey, it's one question on tomorrow's test, and when I say that. And I, I just occurred to me that you might think that's trivial, but hold on a second. And if there's 10 questions, they're eight points each. I mean, one question is kind of a letter grade, uh, you know? Anyway, so 
<laughs> so you want to know, you want to do good. You want to know how to do Euler's method. Uh, so here it is, <clears throat> 2.6 Euler's method. Um, uh, now I could just give you the formula. I could. It, first of all, it is what's called a numerical method. So, so that's kind of funny. We don't do that too often in in, in our classes, but we, we're going to do a numerical method where where we don't get the analytic answer. See, this is doing something analytically. We do this method and we got this answer and there's no estimations. This was all analytically, this is exact, you know, doing pure mathematics. And, uh, but a numerical method is when you're sort of rounding off, you're sort of predicting, you're sort of, it, it, you're approximating is the word. You're, it's an approximating technique. <clears throat> So it's a numerical technique. You're rounding things off. You're approximating. It's not an exact technique. And what it's, so it's kind of used for DEs you can't solve, maybe. You can't solve a DE, so you do this numerical method. <clears throat> and so it starts like this. If you have a differential equation, now I'm going to get theoretical on you for a second. If you have a differential equation, you get kind of get the derivative by itself, Get all the x's and y's over on one side, and we're going to call that a function of x's and y's. So this is just generic here. I got the derivative by itself and all the other crap on the other side. Now, uh, and then I have an initial condition, and I'll be a little generic with that too. Uh, at, at x naught, uh, when you plug x naught into the function, you get y naught. So that's an initial condition. Uh, an initial point x naught y naught. Um, so I've got a point, <clears throat> and I've got this thing, which I could call. Listen to this now. I could. This is the derivative, and it equals this right hand side. I, you know, I could call this the slope, right? It, it's the derivative. It's the slope of this function. Hmm. You know, if, if I had the slope at a certain point. I think I'll do that. Listen, if I plug this point into this, then I would have dy dx, I would have f of x naught y naught. So now I'm plugging this specific numbers into this specific de, and I can actually find the slope at this point. And so if I have the slope at this point, and this point, you know, when I, when I have a point and a slope, I teach my college algebra students this all day, when you have a point and a slope, you can get uh, a line. You can get the equation of a line. I'm going to do that. The equation of a line is y minus y naught. I'm using my point-slope formula. y minus y naught equals the slope, which I'm going to call this. That's my slope. Uh, times x minus x naught. So I just created an equation of a line, which is actually a tangent line, I guess, to my function. <clears throat> See, I'm, I'm developing this theory with you. You know, there's two ways to teach math, or there's three ways to teach math. <laughs> I could just give you this formula, but I'm trying to help you think and, and derive this formula, and I Sometimes you appreciate that, sometimes you don't, but we're doing it anyway. Um, I'm trying to help you derive this formula. I need, I need a good picture. Hang on, what's going on? I was, I was given this, this initial point, x naught, y naught. I was, and then I, I was given the, the DE, and I, took the, I used the DE to help me find my slope at this point. So now I got the slope at this point. So, you know, what I'm searching for actually is So there's some curve, you know, the, the solution to the DE is some curve. And what I just found is this tangent line to this curve. Here it is. I got this tangent line to the curve. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pretend that the tangent line is the solution to the DE. I'm going to pretend that the tangent line is the function to the DE, is the, the solution to the DE, the function. And you know what? Right around that point, it ain't a bad thing to pretend. 
Right around that point, the tangent line approximates the function. Now, you know, way later, uh, well, you know, that tangent line might not be a great prediction of what the function's doing. In fact, but, but right around there, the tangent line is a good predictor of what the function's doing. So, <clears throat> You're trying to find the perfect point for the best prediction? Well, I'm just... I don't have the solution to the DE. I can't solve it, but I can do this. I can get this tangent line, and I can use it as an approximation for the function. Now, what am I going to do? See, what I'm... By the way, see, I didn't do a great job of... What is this numerical? What are we trying to do? And what, we, what this Euler's method is, in this particular, we're not really going to solve the DE. What we're going to do is predict, I want to show you something. We're going to predict a future Y value. I mean, that's what this Euler method is for. It's, it's for predu predicting a future Y value. <clears throat> So here I am, I'm at x naught. I got this y naught. I got this slope, I found this tangent line. Okay, so now what? Now, I'm gonna move over a little bit. I'm gonna use this tangent line, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna move over to, to x1. And to get to x1, I always do this in a little increment called h. So I'm moving over a little h. So I, I take x naught plus h, and that gets me to x1. Okay, you guys? So I add a little h to x naught, and I move over, and that gets me to x1. And then I want to find the y value. Let's, listen, when I move over this little h, I'm at a new x value, so I'm going to try to predict the y value you get. But remember, I don't have the function. I don't have that black function. What I, the only thing I got to predict the new y value is, is the tangent line. So when I plug x1 into the tangent line, I'll be predicting the y value on that tangent line, which maybe the y value on that tangent line is close to the y value of the function, but it's probably not perfect. So I'm predicting this y, I'm trying to predict y1. I'm trying to find y1. All right, wait a minute, how am I gonna do that? Watch, 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 watch. What did I just say? Plug in, so plug, I got this tangent line, so if I plug in x1, I should be able to get y1. But now watch, uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to plug in x1, but what is x1? <clears throat> it's, it's x0 plus h, thank you. So I'm going to plug in x0 plus h for my x, and when I do, I'll be predicting this y value. By the way... Here I go, I'm doing that now. I'm also gonna predict this y value. Uh, that means I'm gonna move this y value over. So I'm gonna call this y naught, I'm adding it to this side, plus f of x naught comma y naught. <clears throat> and what am I plugging in for this x now? Watch this, I'm plugging in x naught plus h. But then it's minus x naught, you guys. So those x naughts cancel and I end up with this. By the way, this h, this little h, is known as the step size. It's, I'm, I'm moving over a little amount called h. It's the step size that I move over. Now, I did a couple algebra moves in my head. You didn't, I, did I lose you? I mean, I didn't do them. Look, I move this y naught over. I'm trying to solve for y. I move the y naught over. When I plug that in and subtracted the other x naught, I'm left with just an h there. You guys with me on this? And now watch this. What do I want to call this y value? Do you know what I want to call this y value that I just found? I plugged in an x1 hoping to predict this new y value, which I called over here y1. That's what I want to do. I want to call it y1. So now I'm at this new point. I'm at this new point here, x1, y1. I just predicted this new y value, and I'm at this new point, x1, y1. And I'm claiming that that new point is, well, I know what that, that new point that I found is on the tangent line. Uh, it ain't on the function. 
but I'm claiming it's close enough. It's a good predictor of where the function will be. All right, guess what? I do it all again. I do it all again now with this new point, x1, y1. And then, so then I calculate the slope at that point. But now remember, that point ain't really on the function, right? It's close. So see, this is where my error starts to get compound now. I'm going to use this point as if he's on the function. Because you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to take this x1, y1. I'm going to plug it in here and get the slope. But see, he ain't really on this function like that original point was. But I'm going to get the slope of the function at this point. The slope will probably change. So I'll, it'll probably send me off on a new tangent line. And I'll, I'll, I'll move over another step size h. And I'll go predict x2. But it'll be on this new tangent line. And I'll find, try to find y2. Now to do that, I just do this whole process again. Now watch, here's what I want to say. To get this y1, you plugged in your x0, your y0, your y0, and your h. So how do you get y2? Watch this. How do you get y2? I said you start with y1 plus you plug in x1 and y1 into here, and you still do your same h. That h remains the same the whole time. It's the same step size. So look at this. So here's y2. How do I get y3? I do it again, but now I'm plugging in y2 and x2. I'm plug and, and, and how do I get x2? It's another step size over. <clears throat> you know, x1 plus h is x2. x2 plus h is x3. See, it's not hard to get x1, x2, and x3. You're just adding h every time. But how do you get y1, y2, and y3? You're using this formula to predict y1, y2, and y3. <clears throat> but you can sort of tell it's going to get off every time. It's, it's kind of getting further and further off the truth. <laughs> Unless you use really small step sizes, that helps. And you don't go too far away. Uh, okay, I think I did a pretty good job of, listen, here, here's the deal, you guys. After talking all this through, here's Euler's method. Euler's method is this formula. Euler's formula or Euler's, but it's this formula. Now I'm going to talk more generically. If I want <clears throat> y n plus 1 to, to get the next y, you start with the previous y, you do the slope at your previous x and previous y, and you multiply by this h. This is Euler's formula. <clears throat> Are you following me? I mean, it's, it's a a subscript game a little bit. <laughs> when you start with x0, y0, you're predicting y1. When you plug in x1 and y1, you're predicting y2. When you plug in x2 and y2, you're predicting y3. I mean, that's kind of what that formula says. Uh, in, 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 and so it's in, it is an iterative process. So you do this, you, you plug stuff into that formula and you do this two or three or four or five times and you're, you're done. You've predicted some future y value. Well, what if your h was the limit as x approaches zero, or h approaches zero? Oh, well, the, 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 the better, the smaller h is, the better predicting this will do. But you know what? It, it'll, uh, it, it'll take a lot longer. <clears throat> now, listen, we're going to do one of these, and maybe we'll do it two other, I don't know. But we'll, you, we're doing this by hand. <clears throat> and in real life, you kind of don't want to do this by hand. You want to program a computer to kind of do this for you. <laughs> and you can easily, well, I don't know how easily, but depending on your programming skills, but you can, <clears throat> you can kind of tell a, a computer to do this. Plug, plug some stuff into here, get the slope, do this formula. I mean, you can tell a computer to plug your initial guys in here. When you get your answer, then you plug it, feed it back in here like a loop, and you can tell a computer to, to do this loop three or four or five times and predict some few what we're anyway we're going to do it by hand uh, and so we don't want to do too many uh, of these but we'll we'll do one let's 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 actually let's do an actual problem okay that's the theory the theory's over hopefully you got it I think I did a decent job <laughs> explaining it but now if I just go grab a problem in two six let's see what we got in two six if we grab a problem 
it is, I mean, I only assigned one, three, five, and seven. Uh, those are good. I might try <coughs> uh, eight for the fun of it here. So eight is this. Uh, it's y prime equals uh, <coughs> xy plus the square root of y. xy plus the square root of y. So that's a DE, you guys. They have a, probably have an initial condition. Y of uh, zero equals one. Okay, so that's <clears throat> Y of zero equals one. So that's my original X and my original Y. What they're asking for, here, here's the deal. What they're asking for is to predict a future Y value. Watch, they're asking for Y of 0.5. So their question is ultimately, what is Y of 0.5? See, I'm... When x is 0.5, please find that y value. So we're predicting this future y value is the ultimate answer. Some, some number is the ultimate answer. <clears throat> uh, okay. Well, my, I'm going to sort of make a chart to help me do this. And on, on tomorrow's test, I might have like a chart sort of set up for you. Um, I mean, uh, <clears throat> I'm going to put my X's and my Y's here, and I'm going to start with my first X and first Y. What is my first X? If X is zero, Y is one. That's that initial condition up there. That's my first X and my first Y. And, and, and now, what, what do you think my next X is going to be? Oh, I'm sorry. I did a bad job. Hang on. I'm sorry. No. Uh, to do the next x, if you keep in mind, what, how do you get from one x to the next x? You need h, thank you. And, and so in the problem, they need to tell me what to do for h. And they tell me to do h equals 0.1. That's what they tell me. <clears throat> so use h equal to 0.1. The truth is they want me to do it twice. They want me to do it with a 0.1, and then they want me to do it with a smaller h, 0.05. I don't think I'm going to make that. That's going to be too, too much work. So I'm going to do h equals 0.1. So if h equals 0.1, then what's the next y value, uh, x value? 0.1. What's the next one? 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0.5. And oh, and by the way, I'm going to stop there because that's the one they want. Look, I'm trying to find the y value that goes with x equals 0.5. So ultimately, this is going to be my answer right here, you guys. Hey, I want to move this bar over because I, I might get some decimals that uh, that need a lot of space. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, this is the answer I'm looking for. You guys with me? I'm looking for this y value. But to get there, I got to crank through several y values. I got to crank through Euler's method about four or five times. That's all. All right, here I go. <clears throat> to predict the next y value, I'm doing. I'm going to do Euler's method now. <clears throat> To predict the next y value, I plug in the previous y value, which is a 1, plus <clears throat> the 0 and the 1 plugged into the f. Now, what's the f? What is the f? What is the f? The f is <clears throat> the right-hand side of the de. The f is basically the slope. Uh, and so here I go. I'm plugging in a 0 and a 1 in there. Watch this. 0 times 1 plus the square root of 1 and then that's all times h. And what's h? 0.1. Did I lose you guys? I'm doing Euler's method, which is plug in your original y, plug in your original x and y into the function, which is the de, which is the slope. So I plugged in my original x and y, 0 and 1, into the de, and then I multiply by h. So this is it. If I crank through this, this is my second y value. These first, this first x and y are, are predicting the second y value. Uh, okay, uh, what is that? Well, that's a zero. <clears throat> that's a one. Multiplied by 0.1 is a 0.1. Added to one, I think it's 1.1. I did that math. <laughs> and I think I got 1.1. So there's the next y value. That's the prediction. Keep in mind, it ain't really, it's a little off, uh, but that's okay. Now we use this x and y value to predict the next y value. And what do I do? I do Euler's formula again. Here it is. And with this specific, with this specific DE here, I'm doing, here, let me just write this. I'm doing Euler's formula, which is 
10 plus 1. Yn equals, well, right, uh, yeah, 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 no, you're right, uh, plus, I guess I'm just writing the right half of the formula, Yn plus uh, xn times yn plus the square root of yn all times h. I don't know. And this, that's what I'm, and that's what specific. I'm doing for this specific right. problem, right? Right. I don't know if that, those notes help you, but, but here I go. I, I think I'll do this next x and y value. I uh, plug in the y value plus uh, the x times the y. Uh, look, I'm being real careful and showing you every step here. The square root of that y. That, that whole thing's my slope times another 0.1. All right, now I need a calculator. <clears throat> and if I crank all this out, I'll get it, I'll predict, be predicting this next y value. 1.2158. 1 1.2158. Did you round that at all? Uh, no. Okay, good. Thank you. And I don't really want to round these. I mean, I don't know. If you round one of these... Of course, that's going to affect this answer, right? So I'm going to try to do this as unrounded as I can, but I might end up, that means I might end up carrying six or eight, ten decibels around for a couple problems, which kind of sucks. I don't, I don't know. Yes, sir? I was going to say, um, you don't require us to uh, have a certain amount of significant digits, do you? Well, no. So significant digits is no. Not a topic of conversation, really, for us. Uh, I just want as many, I want it to be accurate as I can get it. So I don't want to shave off any decimals. So, right. So maybe there's a way to use your calculator and use your answer button or store this. I mean, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a way to help you not type a million decimals. But, but here I go. To predict the next y value, what was this one? To predict the next y value, I'm, I need another one. I need to do uh, this y value, 1.2158, plus this slope formula, which is <clears throat> uh, the x times the y, the x times the y, plus the square root of that y, all times a 0.1. My h, at least my h is a 0.1 every time. This is going to predict the next y value. Predicts the next one. Anybody got it? <laughs> one point three five oh four six five. I typed it all in just like it's written. I used to make, gotta make sure I use parentheses appropriately. And I typed it in and I'm getting 1.35037931. Is that what anybody else got? Yeah. Okay, good. Is that what you said, Eduardo? Uh, no, well, I mean close, 1.35046. I used the exact answer though. I got 1.35046. So am I. But, uh, um, on there, I only give you to five eight. Oh, but here I get the exact answer. Like well, said. I asked you if you rounded it. Oh, how, yeah. that's okay. Yeah. Well, how far did what was this? Uh, one? Eight. Another eight. Yeah. It was uh one point two one five eight eight oh eight eight five. <laughs> oh eight eight five. Yeah. Oh. That's my bad. That's okay. I got you. <laughs> But now you can start to see our dilemma here, writing thousands of decimals. That's why if you can figure out a good way to sort of... Yeah, you can just store it. Store it. And then speed. Or sometimes I can use second answer and use the previous answer, you know, in my formula. I can refer to second answer. <coughs> okay, I got you. So if I use this full decimal... I don't know what I'm going to do tomorrow. I might have to accept rounding it to four or five, five or six decimals. I might have to accept that or something. <laughs> uh,
we're all going to rap differently and get some different answers. Um, listen, I need to do it another time. That'll predict this answer, right, you guys? You guys with me? And then I need to do it one more time. One more time, we'll predict the answer they want. I don't need, listen, so, so when you get this answer, you don't need to do it again. Some students get confused on where they are in this process. You know, the, the previous work here is predicting the next answer. So when you do this previous work and predict this answer, you're done. We have a point. You have, you've predicted this future Y value. You've predicted the Y value at 0.5. But you use these tangent lines that got more off and more off and more off the original function. So it ain't that accurate, but it's something. It's a numerical method that's something. <clears throat> and when you read this, if you read section 2.6 a little bit, they say, well, there's other better numerical methods, and we might learn some of those later. Uh, but this is sort of our first numerical method, which isn't that good. Again, better if we use smaller values of H. But if I was using smaller values, I mean, it already took me four or five times to get from here to here. If I was using 0.05, how long would it take me? See, then I go from 0 to 0.05 to 0.1, then to 0.15, then to 0.2, then to 0.25, then to 0.3. Are you following me? These are my x values if I'm using a smaller h of 0.05. Anyway, it'll take me twice as long to get to, to get to this Y value. But it'll be a better prediction. Smaller H will be better. It'll take me twice as long. Hey, if I'm doing it by hand, I don't want to do that. If I've got a program, program, if I've got a computer program to do it, I don't care how long it takes in a way. Well, all the rest. Can you tell us to find a map for our calculator? <laughs> do you have the answer? No, I'm saying, <laughs> I'm not. I'm just saying. What I'm really saying is in engineering school sometimes, someplace, you might take a class called numerical methods. And numerical methods is a class that's kind of, it's not, it, they make you use computer programming to help you do some numerical methods. And one numeric, they might make you go back and do some old calculus and DE ideas. So it, it won't be a DE class, but it'll be a numerical methods class. And they might bring up Euler's method and ask you to write a little program for Euler's method. Or if you remember Newton's method from Calculus One, there was a thing called Newton's method was a was a was a numerical method from Cal One. <clears throat> yes. So Euler did this all before calculators. Well, that's true. Before calculators, Euler did this, I suppose. Uh, right. So I'm naming my son after him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they did a lot of, see, that's the thing. You're kind of right. The, the, uh, a lot of these numerical procedures are sort of, uh, I mean, they were designed to predict, right, before calculators, before computers, before, right. <clears throat> so it's a lot of tedious work. Wouldn't the best way to do this, I mean, you know, if you were trying to draw, because I know in Cal 1 we did um, chapter 4, uh, with the uh, the critical numbers and the concavity and so on and so forth, wouldn't the best way to, if you're trying to construct a graph of a uh, of a function using just like for example this method, wouldn't it be better to enhance it to give it better accuracy using uh, Chapter Four Cal One method? Well, I guess you got to keep in mind you only, you only got a couple, you only got one thing here. You got a, an initial point and an initial slope. So we're, we're, we're taking that's all we got. The, the, the original DE is the slope of the function that we're sort of trying to use to predict. Uh, so I got this original slope at this one original point, and that's all I got. That's all I got to start with. And then I, I, so I, so I make, so I do the only thing I can with a point and a slope. What can you do with a point and a slope? You can make a tangent line. And then you can say, well, for very small changes in X, that tangent line will predict Y values for me semi-accurately for very small changes in X. So I don't, I don't really have all those techniques, uh, yes. Um, 
Hey, I'll tell you another thing that I'll, that I'll do tomorrow on tomorrow's test that'll save you some time. So I, I might, maybe I will make you carry a lot of decimals because the other thing I'm going to do is I probably won't make you do five of these things. I mean, this is not the worst thing in the world, but for a test tomorrow, I may, I may stop here. So if I'm asking for this one, what do you got to do? You got to do this one. You got to do this one. You got to do this one to predict this one. You know what I mean? Anyway, I, I, might, I might not go all the way to 0.5. I mean, make you, that makes you do it five times, and maybe I'll just ask you to predict, change this problem, and try to predict 0.3, and we're done. <laughs> uh, although there's a little debate about that answer. Um, you guys with me? Do you have the answer for that one uh, by any chance? Uh, not really. No? No. I mean, you want to know this answer? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I can find it in, uh, maybe if I take a little break, we can find it. I got a solutions manual. <clears throat> uh, hey, here's the other thing uh, for tomorrow's test. Listen, you don't have to memorize this either. Uh, when it comes to this question, I'll say, hey, this is an Euler's method question. Recall, here's Euler's method for you. And hopefully you've got to know what all this shit means, though. Uh, you, and then, uh, I mean, I'm not going to give you all these notes, but, but I am going to, I will give you this formula and then you should know what to do with your initial point and your, and your DE. You can uh, get to work on predicting a future Y value. And like I said, maybe you only have to do it a few times. Uh, yeah. 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 Um, <clears throat> okay. Well, it, it is nine o'clock. We can take a little, I think I need a little break. Um, let's take a little break and maybe we'll come back and do some more work, whatever you guys want. Um.